I'm Mallory, and um, I wanted to come on here and just share my story. I've been searching YouTube for videos um, that could help me with my journey, our journey, and I just wanted to share mine. So I have a daughter. She's four years old. My husband and I have been married for a little over 11 years. When we got married, he was in the military, and we didn't want children that way. We were, I was 23, he was 24, almost 25, and um, we just decided to wait until he was done with the military before we had children. So he got out of the military. We'd been married a little over four years, and we moved home um, to Oregon, where we live now, and we bought a house. Um, about a year after moving home and after being settled in the house for a little while they decided to try and have a baby and within three months of coming off of my birth control um, the marina IUD we got pregnant successfully and the rest is history I mean she it was an ideal pregnancy and we had no issues I had a postpartum hemorrhage um, but that was due to an infection she was a week overdue eight days overdue really didn't want a July baby and now I know that I probably should have just waited. But all of that um, said, um, fast forward a couple of years, I had really only wanted our babies to be two or three years apart. Um, my only thought was that I didn't want two babies in diapers. And I had to have a hip surgery and so it kind of postponed things. But as soon as I was healed up from my hip surgery, I, uh, you know, talked to my husband who wanted to start trying. So I had hip surgery July 18th, 2018. My daughter had just turned two years old. And so um, we got pregnant in December that same year after my hip surgery, so about five months later. Um, and we, you know, my pregnancy was progressing and, um, I tried to get into my OB doctor. She didn't see patients until 10 weeks um, into their pregnancy, and she wanted the ultrasound scheduled first. And so at 10 weeks and two days, um, I was scheduled for my ultrasound. The night before my ultrasound, I just figured, you know, at 10 weeks, I had no bleeding, nothing was wrong. And so I just assumed um, that everything was fine. I had all my nausea. I was starting to show, I had just bought my first pair of maternity pants, um, and actually that was a funny story because um, I we were on our way to an event with my husband's work and I realized my pants had a hole in the derriere and so I had to stop my Target, grab some more pants, and I thought, well, whatever, I'm just going to buy maternity pants because what's the point of buying regular pants that fit me now? And so I bought these maternity pants just a few days before. And um, we went to a restaurant and we told my little girl, who then, you know, was two and a half years old, that we were going to be having a baby and she was going to be a big sister. And she had wanted to be a big sister so much. And so we went to the appointment and, of course, we took her with. I thought it would be a great idea to have her be a part of it. But when they were doing the ultrasound, she kept having me um, go to the bathroom. She had me go to the bathroom like twice. And kept searching and searching and all I could see was the yolk sac and the gestational sac and she finally said to me okay well I'm gonna go get the doctor because I'm actually not seeing a baby I'm seeing a yolk sac and a gestational sac but no baby not even a fetal pool and I just sobbed and I was mortified that my two and a half year old was there and I don't think she fully understood what was going on. Um, the doctor came in and she explained to me that we should wait another week and see, you know, if maybe I was wrong on my ovulation dates. I knew I wasn't wrong. I know my body and I know when I ovulated and I knew that I wasn't wrong. Um, so she said, if there's no baby next week, then it's probably a blighted ovum. And at this point, I would recommend a DNC since you're so far into it and your body hasn't recognized it yet. And so we waited until 11 and a half weeks. We came back the following week and um, we confirmed that the baby had passed before the fetal pole was even developed. 
So, um, a few days later, on March 1st of 2019, I had my first DNC. And I thought, you know, okay, well, we'll be able to reset. And I was absolutely devastated. We named that baby. Um, her name, we don't know that it was a girl, but we suspect that it was a girl. We named her Joy Elizabeth. And um, so then fast forward a couple of months, I had initially stopped bleeding after two weeks. But then after two weeks, I started bleeding again. And it lasted for about two weeks. And I would stop for a day or so. And then I would start bleeding again. And it wasn't heavy bleeding, but it was enough to have to wear a panty liner all day long. And um, it just kept happening over and over. And oddly enough, my insurance changed um, in April to Providence. Um, and the, the doctor who had delivered my daughter um, had switched over to Providence shortly after she delivered my daughter. So I actually got to see her again, which was really great. So I went to her and I actually thought, um, you know, the bleeding had stopped again. And I actually thought that maybe, um, maybe I was pregnant again or something, um, because I was still getting positive pregnancy tests, you know, a month later. And, um, so they tested my HCG, you know, they did a series of tests and found that it was slowly dropping. So it wasn't a new pregnancy. And so then went on the two weeks on bleeding and then, you know, the back and forth and uh, the spotting. And um, so then, like, my doctor kept checking my HCG and it was going down so slow. And finally, it got down to, I don't remember what it was. It was like 20, but then it started going up again to 28. And then it went up again. And so she decided that we should do a hysteroscopy um, and see if there was any retained placenta. And we also did an ultrasound and they suspected retained placenta on there. And so um, we did another DNC with her hysteroscopy and she said she felt like she got it all out. And so that was in July. So it was three months from the time, four months from the time that I had my original DNC to my follow-up DNC. And then um, I thought, well, okay, you know, everything's just going to be back to normal. But then I started feeling really tired, getting really, really bad headaches, like to the point where I could barely function, like throughout the day, it was so bad. And, um, I talked to my doctor and she wanted to do some labs. So she checked my thyroid and that was at like 3.28. And previously my thyroid, I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't, um, higher like that. And so she said, anything above 2.5 will put you in a category to, um, possibly be at risk for recurrent miscarriages. So she put me on levothyroxin, I, I can never say that, but the thyroid medication. Um, and um, I thought, okay, we're good to go. And actually, after she put me on that, a week later, my headaches completely stopped and the fatigue was gone. And so I don't know if it was my body adjusting or what it was, but it was gone. Um, I also, um, after that, had some, like, discharge, nipple discharge, um, like colostrum. And I thought that was also really strange. I don't know if it was my body just kind of transitioning and finally realizing that I wasn't pregnant because I had held on to that pregnancy or at least tissue from that pregnancy for so long. I don't know if it was just kind of flushing itself. Um, but she did, um, do some tests on my pituitary gland and, and all of that. Everything came back normal. So then, um, the next month, August, I got pregnant. It was awesome. I was so excited. And um, I just, I thought things would be great. And at five weeks, I started bleeding, spotting. And I remember calling an on-call doctor because I really just wanted peace of mind. I knew at five weeks, there was nothing they could do. You can't do an ultrasound. I just wanted peace of mind that things could be okay. And what she said to me was either this is a chemical pregnancy and you're miscarrying or you'll be fine. Or she didn't say that. What'd she say? I don't remember. Whatever she said was, was insensitive. It was basically, I think she said that she thought I was miscarrying 
and that Dr. Kapler or my doctor would be in um, on Monday and I can have her test my HCGs to make sure that they're going up. And I said, well, she already did. And at that point they had gone up. And so when Dr. Kapler came in, um, you know, the following Monday I had her take my blood levels again and um, they had like stalled, barely rose over like the course, it was from Thursday to Monday and they barely rose at all. And then she checked them again, and they rose some, like 60%. She checked them again, and they were raised like another 60%. But they weren't, she was still hopeful that things could be okay. I, I knew it. I knew that it was not. Um, but they, you know, scheduled my ultrasound, and we were seven weeks and three days or something. And brought my daughter with me. I just, I don't know, I guess I just thought the bleeding had stopped by this point. And I guess I just thought that two in a row wasn't going to happen to me. And so we went in and they saw a baby. They saw a heartbeat. It was measuring a few days behind. It was like measuring six, six or something. And, um, but they said it, um, the heart rate was also borderline low. It wasn't classified as low as borderline, it was like one heart, one beat per minute from being away from. And my doctor wanted to see me a week later, and when she did an ultrasound, there was no heartbeat. And this was in October, so I was eight weeks, and um, eight weeks in one day. And so she offered, um, you know, a few options. Um, but I just wanted to do a GNC and get it over with. I didn't want to do anything at home that wasn't going to work and um, traumatize my child any more than I had already traumatized her. So I opted for a DNC and I made sure the doctor who was doing it was not my doctor because she wasn't on call, but she wasn't on call for a while and I wanted to just get it done. And um, the doctor was very kind. They did another ultrasound the following morning. It was a Saturday morning. I chose Saturday because my husband was off of work. She was very kind. They did another ultrasound and confirmed that the baby had no heartbeat. Um, they wouldn't do any recurrent miscarriage testing or any, they wouldn't do a biopsy of the baby because um, I haven't had three miscarriages. They would only do it if you've had three, my insurance and so um, I had my DNC and I bled for like a week and my HCG was back down to zero in like, or I think it was like a three in no time, two weeks. And I thought, very, I felt very hopeful. I thought that things would, you know, pick up quickly. And um, so then November rolled around and December and January and February and the months kept going on and um i started asking or actually sorry originally after um my second miscarriage my doctor did like a partial workup on me for mis recurrent miscarriages and she did diagnose me with that and she did a partial workup and everything came back normal so she said you know there's no reason that you wouldn't be able to conceive easily and like I'm sure this is just a flu. And so uh, months and months and months and months, now we're at 10 months and I'm still not pregnant. And we've done a sauna histogram to see if there was any scarring in my uterus from the DNCs. Um, and we've done an HCG, which is an x-ray of your uterus where they inject dye through your tubes to make sure that they aren't blocked. And um, on both the sauna histogram and the HCG, there was a tiny bit of shadowing at the top of my uterus, but the radiologist felt like it wasn't enough to be concerned and that she really doesn't think that there is any scar tissue on my uterus. Um, I, you know, if you guys are interested in those procedures, I could talk about them in another video. Um, so now here we are and um, we, it's been 10 months since my miscarriage and we're still trying. And so finally I asked my doctor um, if she would put me on Clomid and um, just to give it a try. Um, she also recommended getting my husband a semen analysis. So he's doing that next week. And last night was my first night with Clomid. 
I'm really hoping it's going to work. Um, Fomen side effects for me so far were just being um, a little bit loopy or dizzy, um, like a little bit disoriented. Not a lot, a little bit. Um, felt like I had a drink, kind of, um, last night, and it took me a few hours to fall asleep. Other than that, no side effects. I feel like I'm pretty fortunate so far. Um, and so that's where we're at. We're trying for another baby. My daughter desperately wants to be a big sister. And um, it's really sad because lately she'll just get sad at the most random things. And I, you know, just do my best to be with her and let her know that hard things are going to happen in life. Sad things are going to happen in life, but that God is with us through those hard things. And um, we just pray and hope for another baby. And I told her that I won't give up. And, you know, it wasn't my my plan or my idea that my children would be five years apart because that's what we're looking at now if we get pregnant again anytime soon five years apart that was not my plan but I have to accept what is and um, I'll be grateful for a baby whenever I do get it and um, that's my story so I just wanted to put it out here if you guys have questions about any of it please feel free to comment and ask and I'll do my best to answer them and I'll try to keep you updated. Thanks.